Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a $50 deck tech. When I say $50, I mean that is an overall deck cost. Both shipping and commanders that are $10 or less are going to be included in that cost, but basic lands will not be. Decks on this channel are built to be fun, inexpensive, and focused. If you want to learn more about what a focused commander deck is, check out this video here. On this deck tech, I'm going to take you through its strategy, the tactics, and how this deck wins. This show and episodes like this one are possible because of viewers like you. So if you're looking for some easy ways to help support the show, make sure you like this episode and share it with friends. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise, it really does help support the channel. Another easy way to support this channel is by using our TCG Player affiliate links. So make sure that you're looking for those links in the description whenever you're buying a deck or just individual cards. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. And this episode's actually a patron selected deck tech. Once a month, patrons get to vote on what commander that they'd like to see in an upcoming deck tech. Whatever commander gets the most votes, wins. And the commander that they selected was Hepatra. Hepatra Vizier of Poisons is a 2-2 human cleric that costs black green. Whenever Hepatra Vizier of Poisons deals combat damage to a player, you may put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. And whenever you put one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature, create a 1-1 one, one green snake creature token with death touch. Now that first trigger is nice, but we're really going to focus on that second part. Getting a token every single time we put a minus one minus one counter on a creature is huge. And on top of that, these tokens have death touch, so they're a huge threat to our opponents. With them on the field, it's going to be very hard for opponents to justify swinging at us. So what's our strategy for this deck? Well, we're going to put those minus one, minus one counters on creatures to build a massive snake army. Now, we've got ways to put counters on individually, but we also have ways to put counters on everything. On top of creating an army for us, those counters are going to also help us control the board. And then how do we win with this deck? Well, we're going to overwhelm our opponents with our snakes, or we're going to combo off. As we go through this deck, you're going to see how quickly this number of snakes can get out of control. And we also have a few combos that already synergize with the deck, just in case. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how we're going to win with it. So we're going to start off with tactic number one, Matters of Mana. First up, we're going to be running Rampant Growth and Edge of Autumn. Both are fantastic turn two ramp spells. On top of that, later on in the game, if we need to, we can cycle Edge of Autumn by sacrificing a land. Next up, we've got some other good turn two plays with Talisman of Resistance and Golgari Signet. Both of these mana rocks are fantastic ways for us to ramp and fix our mana. Now our commander does cost two, so we can cast her on turn two if we need to. But sometimes it's better for us to ramp first, then cast something along with her next turn. This deck is pretty low to the ground, so we don't need too much early ramp. But we do have some ways to ramp that can be very explosive once we're set up. Pitiless Plunder says, whenever another creature you control dies, create a colorless treasure artifact token. With this deck, we're going to create and kill a lot of snakes. So for each one of our snakes that dies, we get a treasure. Another way for us to ramp with our snakes is Cryptolith Rite. It essentially turns every single one of our creatures into mana dorks. So the more snakes that we create, the more mana that we have access to. But we're also running some actual mana dorks with Devoted Druid and Channeler Initiate. Devoted Druid only taps for a green, but we can also put a minus one minus one counter on it to untap it. This not only works great with our commander, but we can actually combo with this too with some other pieces. And then Channeler Initiate comes into play with three minus one minus one counters on her. And then we can tap and remove a minus one minus one counter from her to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. We're running plenty of ways in this deck to get even more counters on her so that we can keep using her this way. And every time we do that, we get another snake. So we just started talking about creating snakes with these counters, but what are some more ways that we can do that? Let's go through some of them now in tactic number two, I'm not feeling so good. First up, we've got Lethal Sting, which makes us put a minus one minus one counter on one of our creatures, and then we can destroy target creature. So essentially, we're going to get a snake out of this, and we get to destroy target creature. And then there's Exemplar of Strength, which when it enters the battlefield, we put three minus one minus one counters on target creature we control. When it attacks, we can remove a counter from it and then gain one life. Next up, there's Defiant Great Maul, which when it enters the battlefield, we put two minus one minus one counters on target creature we control. And then whenever one of those counters goes on Defiant Great Maul, we can remove a minus one minus one counter from another target creature we control. This can be a great way for us to save some of our other creatures, including our commander, who might be stacking up those counters. And then there's Soul Stinger, which when it enters the battlefield, we put two minus one minus one counters on target creature we control. Once it dies, we can put a minus one minus one counter on target creature for each minus one minus one counter on Soul Stinger. So essentially, this creature can get us two snakes and be a removal spell for us. Next up, there's Ahmed Eternal, which has the flick three, and whenever an opponent casts a spell, put a minus one minus one counter on a mid turn. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, all those minus one minus one counters go away. So for three mana, just by this sitting on the battlefield, whenever opponents cast spells, they're going to be making us snakes. So as long as this stays alive, at the very least, we get five snakes with it. Finally, we've got two creatures that can help spread some counters out. Serrated by Skellion has tap, put a minus one minus one counter on Serrated by Skellion and a minus one minus one counter on target creature. So every time we tap this, we're going to get a total of two snakes. And then when Decimator Beetle enters the battlefield, we put a minus one minus one counter on target creature we control. When it attacks, we can remove a minus one minus one counter from target creature we control and put one of those counters onto target creature and defending player controls. So every time this creature 
creature attacks, it can help keep our creatures alive as well as take down some of our opponents and make us snakes. But what are some more targeted ways that we have at taking down opponents' creatures while making snakes? Let's go through them now in tactic number three, spread the infection. First up, there's Fume Spitter, which we can sacrifice to put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. And then there's Bane Whip Punisher, which when it enters the battlefield, we put a minus one minus one counter on target creature, and we can pay a black to sacrifice it to destroy any creature that has a minus one minus one counter on it. When Skin Render enters the battlefield, we can put three minus one minus one counters on target creature. Next up, we've got Shambling Swarm, which does this in a bigger way. When it dies, we get to give out three minus one minus one counters. Now those counters may be removed at the next end step, but we still get those snakes. So this can take out some small creatures on top of giving us three snakes. And then we're running Splendid Agony, which lets us distribute two counters. And then Incremental Blight is an even bigger version of this. It says put a minus one minus one counter on target creature, two minus one minus one counters on another target creature, and three minus one minus one counters on a third target creature. So this can easily take out three creatures on top of making us three snakes. And finally, there's Serrated Arrows, which comes into play with three Arrowhead counters on it. We can tap to remove one of those counters to put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. We definitely have some ways to get more counters on this, but we'll go through that later. But for now, let's go through some of our spells that have an even bigger effect. So it's time to move on to tactic number four, sharing is caring. First up, there's Soul Snuffers, which when it enters the battlefield, we put a minus one minus one counter on each creature. So with our commander in play for each creature on the battlefield, we're going to get a snake. For just four mana, that's an insane value. But with Black Sun Zenith, we can do that for three mana. It lets you put X minus one minus one counters on each creature. Again, we just need one counter on every creature to get our snake army, so this just has to cost three. And then there's Liliana's Influence, which keeps our creatures safe, and it puts a minus one minus one counter on each creature we don't control. While this isn't quite as mana efficient, it's still very effective. Next up, we've got some repeatable ways to spread some counters around with Midnight Banshee and Carnifex Demon. Midnight Banshee says, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a minus one minus one counter on each non-black creature. If this sticks around with our commander, it's going to make a giant snake army. And then Carnifex enters the battlefield with two minus one minus one counters on it, and we can pay a blank to remove one of those counters to put a minus one minus one counter on each other creature. And we've got plenty of ways to get those counters back on it, so we can just keep doing it. With this, we do have to be careful though, since we usually want to keep our commander alive. And although this and some of our other spells are going to kill our snakes, that's completely fine. Those snakes are getting replaced anyways, and we've got plenty of ways to take advantage of them dying. Another creature that we actually want to die is Lockjaw Snapper, because when it dies, we put a minus one minus one counter on each creature with a minus one minus one counter on it. If we're set up properly, this can make us a huge amount of snakes when it dies. This effect is somewhat similar to a keyword that works very well with this deck. Let's go through what that is in tactic number five, what a pro. First up, there's Courage and Crisis, which says, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, then proliferate. Proliferating means that you choose any number of permanents and or players, then give each another counter of each kind they already have. This effect is incredibly explosive with Hepatra. Essentially for each creature with a minus minus one counter on them, they get another counter and we get a snake. This allows us to control the board and create a massive army very quickly. So we're pretty much gonna want as many proliferate effects as we can get. Next up, we've got Grim Affliction and Spread the Sickness. Grim Affliction puts a minus one minus one counter on target creature, then it proliferates. And Spread the Sickness says destroy target creature, then proliferate. Both Pollen Bright Druid and Bloomhawk proliferate when they come into play. Next up, there's Evolution Sage, which can have an even more lasting effect. Every single time a land comes into play under our control, we can proliferate. This essentially turns all of our lands that we play into token generators, and something like an Evolving Wilds can be doubly as effective. Finally, we've got some more repeatable ways to proliferate. When Contagion Clasp enters the battlefield, we put a minus one minus counter on target creature, and then we can pay for and tap it to proliferate. With Throne of Gaff, we can tap and sacrifice an artifact to proliferate. And Plague Bomb Beast makes it even easier, allowing us to just tap and sacrifice a creature to do so. Now, while spreading those counters around and creating a giant snake army is great, it's not going to solve all of our problems. Let's go through some ways that can help us with everything else in tactic number six, us and them. First up, there's Whisper Soul Cloak, which is a fantastic piece of equipment for our commander. It not only protects her, but it also helps her get through so we can get that combat damage trigger. Next up, we're going to be running Rapid Vigor and Golgari Charm, both of which can protect our entire team. Each of them say, regenerate each creature you control. But with Golgari Charm, we can instead choose to destroy target enchantment or give all creatures minus one, minus one until end of turn. Another great card that gives us some options is Return to Nature. It says, choose one, destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, or exile target card from a graveyard. And then there's Beast Within, which can pretty much deal with anything. It says, destroy target permanent, its controller creates a 3-3 green beast creature token. And that beast is actually a good thing for us since it's another target for counters. Speaking of targets for counters, there's Wicker Bow Elder. It comes into play with one and we can pay a green to remove it and destroy target artifact or enchantment. Again, the more counters that we can get on it, the better. And finally, there's Predatory Rampage, which can be a removal spell or a finisher. It says creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of turn. Each creature your opponents control block this turn of Fable. Since our snakes have death touch, they can take out a ton of our opponent's creatures. And the ones they get through are going to deal a ton of damage. But what are some ways that we can get to all these great cards and keep things going? Let's go over them now in tactic number seven, Drawn to Death. 
First up, there's Death Reap Ritual, which has Morbid. At the beginning of each end step, if a creature died this turn, you may draw a card. So we are limited to just one card each turn, but it can even be on our opponent's turns too. But Moldrefine Reclamation might be an even more effective way to draw cards. It says whenever a creature you control dies, you gain one life and draw a card. As I mentioned before, we're going to be killing off and making a ton of snake tokens. With this in play, we're going to gain a ton of life and draw an absurd amount of cards. Next up, we've got Generous Patron, which is going to generate a ton of value as well. It says whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control, draw a card. Again, this deck is completely built around putting counters on our opponent's creatures. But we've got some immediate ways to draw cards too with Shamanic Revelation and Collective Unconscious. Both are going to draw us a card for each creature we control. With a massive number of snakes that we can create with this deck, that can be a huge influx of cards in one turn. Next up we've got Driven to Despair which is going to let our snakes draw us cards on their own. Driven makes it so that whenever our creatures deal combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card. And then Despair gives our creatures menace and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card. With this deadly combination we can easily draw a ton of cards and wipe out our opponent's hands. Finally we're going to be running Skull Claim which is a very easy way for us to draw cards with this deck. Essentially by paying one and losing a snake we get to draw two cards. This can easily help us dig for the exact cards that we need. But what happens if we lose a key piece or we need one right away? So let's go through some cards to help us with that in tactic number 8, Life Cycle. First up we've got Regrowth, which is a very simple but effective card. It says return target card from your graveyard to your hand. So if we do lose a key piece, we can get it right back. And if we want a tutor for one of our key pieces, we've got Diabolic Tutor. It's going to let us search our library for a card and put that card directly into our hand. And there's one card in particular that stands above the rest. Let's go through what that card is in tactic number 9, bring some friends. First up we've got the Golden Pig of this deck, which is the number 1 card out of our 99, and that card is Blowfly Infestation. It's an enchantment for two and a black, and it says whenever a creature dies, if it had a minus one minus one counter on it, put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. Now this card can have other applications in this deck, but this is essentially a two card combo with our commander. Once we've got our commander, this and two snakes in play, we're good to go. When we put a minus one minus one counter on one of our snakes, it's gonna die. That triggers Blowfly Infestation and our commander. With Blowfly, we can put a counter on the other snake, and our commander is going to create another snake. Then that snake dies, and the exact same thing happens. This loop is going to keep happening until we choose to target something else. Now, essentially, this gives us infinite enter the battlefield triggers and death triggers, but we've got other ways to win with this combination. And as I mentioned before, this is still a very effective card without the combo. It can completely wipe out every single one of our opponent's creatures that have one toughness, and it can help us continuously spread counters among them. But once we have this combo established though, we just need one of a few pieces to win. One of those other pieces can be Nest of Scarabs or Flourishing Defenses. Essentially, each of these do the same thing as our commander, creating a token every single time a minus one minus one counter is placed on a creature. So with either of these in play in our commander, we're getting two tokens instead of one. The same is going to be true if these are both in play and our commander isn't. Essentially, with that Blowfly Infestation loop though, we make infinite tokens. Again, this deck doesn't need combos to win though. These are both very powerful cards in this deck, even outside of that combo. You'll just naturally be creating a lot of tokens anyways. And then another great way to create tokens with this deck is Second Harvest. It essentially just doubles up the amount of tokens that we have. Now we can swing at our opponents with our giant army, but there's even easier ways to kill our opponents. Let's go through them now in tactic number 10, No Anti-Venom. First up we've got Falconrath Noble, Zulaport Cutthroat, and Poison Tip Archer, all of which are going to drain our opponents. All these do it in a somewhat different way, but they all work great in this stack. And if we're comboing off, each of these will win us the game. Another one of our great finishers is Obelisk Spider. It drains our opponents whenever we put a minus minus one counter on a creature. But we've also got some utility cards that can actually go infinite with this deck too. By paying Golgari, we can remove a counter from a creature we control and Quill Spike gets plus three plus three until end of turn. So while we're spreading counters around, we can just use this to save some of our creatures if we need to. But we can also just make this infinitely big with Devoted Druid. And with a patcher in play, we're also going to be making infinite snakes. And then there's Ivy Lane Denison, which is similar, but it can be even more effective. It says whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus minus one counter on target creature. The snakes that Apatra makes are green. So it goes like this, we can tap to vote a druid for mana, and then we can put a minus one minus one counter on her to untap her. Apatra creates a snake, and then Ivy Lane Denison triggers. We put a plus minus one counter on devoted druid, so both counters cancel. We can do this as many times as we want, creating infinite green mana and making infinite snake tokens. A similar combo also works with Cinderhaze Reg. Essentially, we're going to be making infinite snake tokens and make all of our opponents discard their hands. Again, this deck isn't built around these combos and doesn't need them to win, but all the pieces of the combos are very synergistic with the deck as it is. So this deck can be incredibly powerful and can win out of absolutely nowhere. But now that we've gone through the spells in this deck, let's go on to the mana base. First up, we've got Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, both of which we can tap and sacrifice to search our library for basic land and put into play tapped. Next up, we've got Jun Panorama, which can get us a Swamp or a Forest into play tapped. And then there's Foul Orchard, Golgari Guildgate, and Jungle Hollow, each of which enter the battlefield tapped and tap for either a black or green mana. Next up there's Tainted Wood, which can tap for both of our colors if we control a Swamp. 
And then Golgari Rod Farm enters the battlefield tapped and makes its return land back to our hand, but it taps for both of our colors. Next up, we've got Vivid Marsh and Vivid Grove, each enter the battlefield tapped with two charge counters on them. They can tap for one of our colors, or we can tap and remove a charge counter from them to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. And then there's Ordinary the Vastwood, which enters the battlefield tapped, and it can tap for a green. We can also tap it to put a plus one plus one counter on each green creature that enters the battlefield this turn. Next up, there's Grasping Dunes, which we can pay one and tap and sacrifice it to put a minus minus one counter on target creature. And if near Deadlands has, pay two black black, tap and sacrifice the desert, put two minus one minus one counters on target creature and opponent controls. Next, there's Karn's Bastion, which we can pay four and tap to proliferate. And finally, we're going to be running 21 basic lands, 11 will be a swamp, and 10 will be a forest. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG Player Optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Apache or EDH rec deck will set you back $187.53. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at $49.67. Again, the price of this deck is the price that I got for it on the day that I'm recording. If you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, check out the link in the description. Keep in mind that prices can and will fluctuate and change over time. But with these deck costs, I want to be as transparent as I possibly can. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are about to be tuned and focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades now to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, we're going to be adding in Dusk Urchins and taking out Exemplar of Strength. Dusk Urchins can be very effective at providing us value and drawing us cards. Next up, let's add in Crumbling Ashes and take out Lockjaw Snapper. It's just a fantastic way for us to easily control the board. And then let's add in Heroic Intervention and take out Rap and Vigor. Heroic Intervention is just a fantastic card in a strict upgrade. Next up, let's add in Shashiro the Anointed and take out Death Reap Ritual. Shashiro is going to pump our snakes and draw us a ton of cards. And then we're going to be adding in Diabolic Intent and taking out Diabolic Tutor. It's just a much more efficient tutor, especially for this deck. And finally, let's add in Necro Skitter and take out Pre Rampage. In this deck, Necro Skitter can essentially steal all of our opponent's creatures. And with that, our show is coming to a close, but I really want to hear about your thoughts on these picks, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. And make sure that you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future Commanders for deck techs. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, check out some of our other episodes on budget deck techs, quest for quarters episodes, commander topics, and creators quarters. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.